All right, uh, thanks for joining uh, the launching time, uh, some product live demo. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the build serverless hybrid cloud using supersonic Java as well as, 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 as Quarkus. So my name is Daniel O. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major. So here's my some information. If you reach out to me, my YouTube channel and Twitter and the email, uh, just let me know. All right. So Quarkus is uh, based on a uh, new shiny Java stack, and uh, you can develop your own cloud neighbor microservice application, as well as you can design your own serverless application along with your uh, Kubernetes cloud platform, as well as uh, build up your own event-driven architecture based on Quarkus application. So Quarkus uh, mainly not focus on the monolith application. Instead, it's a little bit more focus on Cloud every application, uh, optimize your uh, Java performance issue. Uh, and also, we can solve that problem uh, based on a new uh, Quarkus feature. I'm going to showcase uh, how Quarkus works in your Cloud every application. So, just a little bit uh, drill down uh, how Quarkus optimize your traditional Java stack, specifically Linux container technology, but also how to run your Quarkus application on top of the Kubernetes cluster. So mainly you can still play with the uh, same architecture such as the Microsoft application architecture, and but you can deploy the traditional Microsoft application, but also you can deploy a serverless application without uh, no significant uh, code change, but just a small tweak on your application properly file or a small change in your application side uh, with, uh, with some uh, annotation. And you can deploy your application, uh, daily work, or you can deploy uh, it's just a few, uh, couple of times in, in a week uh, along with your DevOps pipeline. And memory footprint and uh, response time, startup time is pretty much better than any other traditional Java stack. I'm gonna show you uh, in a demo time. So how the traditional Java framework start and get working, I mean, so here is a two step from build step to run step your own Java application in your local machine as well as your production environment. So in a build time, the Java technology uh, try to create your bytecode, and then you can also use the uh, prepared packaging tool like a Maven Grader, but you you just need to create the bytecode, and then that bytecode can be running any application server. This is a huge benefit. Uh, when the new internet technology came out just 25 years ago, when you don't need to worry about any some machine uh, dependent uh, binary code at a time. But now we are changing our infrastructure layer as part of the runtime of the application runtime, moving forward to immutable infrastructure from mutable infrastructure. So immutable infrastructure, you already know that uh, Kubernetes of which the container platform that is a representative of immutable infrastructure. So just imagine you have a one Microsoft application, but you need to uh, deploy thousand pods on your Kubernetes cluster, even though that application same functionality. So the Java has a nice uh, dynamic behavior, just like uh, during runtime, uh, your Java application uh, in, in as a part of the JVM technology, they're looking forward to uh, do a lot of stuff like uh, the loading configuration file and the processing theme and also uh, loading uh, classes file and then some feature should be enable and disable and a parsing annotation and descriptor and a scanning. There are a lot of a bunch of stuff uh, at runtime uh, rather than build time. This is one of the dynamic behavior, this is a really wonderful feature at the mutable infrastructure. So at the last step, the sixth step, just only, uh, we actually wanted to job in the last step, just to start your application using threads or pools. So how Quarkus change this stuff uh, to optimize and running on a Kubernetes cluster with the Linux container technology? We uh, shift to the left side, as you can see, at build time, we do a lot of things. You can also build a native comparison as optional. It depends on the what kind of application you need to deploy on Kubernetes cluster, and what kind of business domain, what kind of functionality you need to maintain on your Kubernetes cluster. 
at a time you can uh, select just thin jar comparison based on just in compiled strategy, but also you can package your application based on that comparison, uh, based on uh, ahead of time uh, build strategy. At runtime, take a look at that. We just needed to start your own application, actual application. This is a huge change, and this is so this solution uh, to Quarkus solves uh, existing uh, Java problem to make it better, greater in a Kubernetes cluster. So here, here is the path how to uh, package, <clears throat> I'm sorry, how to package your application from compile as a developer standpoint, create your own thin jar, and then you can run on top of JVM uh, using hotspot uh, capability, but also you can uh, packaging the comparison, which means it's just executable by like a Go, and then just running on top of the GraalVM uh, rather than JVM. So here is a one good thing, how Quarkus leverages your serverless. So Quarkus uh, include a funky extension. Extension is kind of a capability uh, of your enterprise application, like a REST, uh, REST endpoint and what data transaction or security, like a single sign authentication. So you can imagine uh, if you are playing with the Maven Java project, there are a lot of dependency on your Maven Java application. So Quarkus uh, easily integrate that dependency library using Quarkus extension. The Funky is one of the extension, is a standard uh, Java portal API uh, for Java developer to write a function and deploy them into multiple fast and serverless platform, just like you can see Amazon Lambda and the Google function and Azure function, and even you can deploy on-prem Kubernetes plus k enabled serverless uh, infrastructure. So let's, I'm gonna stop talking here, and then let's jump into demo. I'm gonna stop my present mode, and here's my, a local environment, uh, I'm gonna use the VS Code today. And uh, basically, the Quarkus provide the ID tool, I mean, Quarkus tool, and uh, you could install uh, uh, extension as a plugin into your uh, prepared ID tool. For example, I'm using VS Code, but you can also uh, install the Quarkus tool into your NetBeans or IntelliJ or Eclipse. Okay, let's try to create a new project here. So you can, add, you can, Select Maven or Gradle. So I'm going to use Gradle today and a project group ID, the Mida Daniel. And then I'm going to use a project name, uh, Artifact I Serverless Dash Funky. And then the project version, just 1.0. And then the project name is Daniel. And the resource name is a, this resource name is automatically generate on the sample Java application, export the recipe API. The because Quarkers provide uh, CDI bean as well as rest easy uh, and less easy exposure capability by default. Okay, let's try to use the greater resource. And then I'm not gonna add any extension uh, at the beginning time and save my project uh, in my temp directory. Now I can, uh, we have the sample Quarkus application based on Maven project. When you go to Palm XML, uh, you can see uh, there are some deep, Default dependency already pulled down, install on your local machine, like REST EG, uh, allowed us uh, to export the RESTful API, and also unit tests based on uh, Java unit. And also go to source directory, and we have one year one uh, generated Java application, as I already mentioned, is uh, export the RESTful API and the return hello, just like a hello or the basic sample application. The first step, we're gonna run my Quarkus application as a runtime on my local machine using Maven plugin. So I'm gonna open my new terminal and then just using Maven plugin, Quarkus, and dev mode. This is one of the beauty of the Quarkus. Uh, you can run Quarkus application with the uh, live coding uh, functionality as you can see here. So live coding activated and then the CDI REST EG features already installed. So what exactly uh, the library coding means on my local machine, let's try to split my terminal window and then try to access uh, my default port 8080. And then the last 
and point here, copy and paste here. The rest, the return code, hello. Oh, okay, my application totally working. And let's try to change my code just like the developer's daily work. Let's try to change it to welcome, uh, J4K. And I just save my file and I retry to access the endpoint. At this moment, as you can see in the left side, the Quarkus automatically rebuild packaging this application and re reload my runtime. But in the meantime, as a developer standpoint, I don't even try to do anything on the manual. This is a huge impact for developer. In the end, uh, this feature increases developer productivity. So in a, the return code, welcome, J4K automatically return. So this is uh, uh, what live coding means. Okay, so let's try to change this situation or Microsoft's application uh, as a function. So in order to that, I already mentioned Quarkus provides a funky extension. Let's try to add that feature. So I'm gonna to add a new Quarkus extension here, and then just type in funky uh, binding, and it just return and automatically install the funky extension here. And next step is I'm gonna change it to add uh, that annotation. So I, I'm not going to use this uh, traditional uh, the rest endpoint like a get and produce any longer. Uh, just use the func func annotation. Pretty simple. And then the func annotation map to your function name uh, with your method name. For example, in that case, this function name is hello, like uh, just like your method name. And you can also specify your own function name as well. I'm going to show you just a little bit later. And then I, I, I need I needed to delete unnecessary packaging file. So now I have uh, just eleven uh, line of code in my application to change the existing traditional microservice application into function. Pretty simple, pretty easy, and even you have a simple and less your Java application code. And then go to access endpoint once again, HTTP and 8080. And then now I'm gonna to use endpoint, uh, which is the function name, hello. So now we got the same result, welcome to J4K. And then actually you can change that, J4K and, and uh, Quarkers. And I just save one more time and try to access the endpoint. And now you got the same. So now this is this application as a function, which means uh, I can deploy uh, this function uh, to multiple serverless platform. But but for that, I'm going to add a new function here and using CDI Bean. As I already mentioned, Quarkus support fully uh, CDI capability by default. So in order to that, let's try to add a new folder here. Uh, let's say name service here, and I create a new file, greeter and service that Java file, and then we're gonna change that, and then we're gonna to add annotation is scope. In a simple method, I'm just add a string and greeter and a string name, and the return is just welcome and add uh, the name parameter and uh, for subarrays using Quarkus funky. All right, and set my column. Okay, looks good. It's a simple CDI bin and go back to my resource file. Let's try to add this CDI bin using inject annotation, just like a Spring Boot auto wire in a, uh, annotation. And I just define a greater service in an instance name service, and then just you uh, function here. Once again, the func annotation, and then public and string greater and string name. Oops, string name and invoke 
service and greeter. You know, one more thing I can, I needed to specify uh, my uh, function name in the case, I'm not gonna use the uh, the greeter as a function name, as a, as an end point. Let's try to uh, make some different, like a hybrid. So, so in just we have a created a new function with the endpoint as well as the function name hybrid, and also uh, we can use the CDI injection when you call this function. So just two more features with the funky annotation, funky extension. So let's try to access the endpoint with some parameter uh, like my name. Echo my name Daniel O and. P8080 and hybrid. So now that we got a result, uh, welcome Daniel Rowe for serverless using Corpus Funky. Let's try it one more time uh, with some different name, uh, like my friend, uh, Eric Murphy. Okay. So we gotta welcome Eric Murphy for serverless using Quarkus Funky, pretty awesome. So next step, I'm gonna deploy this application to uh, some serverless platform. Let's try to deploy Amazon Lambda first. So in order to do that, we need to add another extension to deploy uh, Amazon Lambda, for example. So go to add extension here in a funky, and then we can find the Amazon Lambda binding here. And I try to add a new extension, my Palm XML. In the meantime, so all dependency automatically download. And then let's try to maybe clean package. And uh, I'm gonna skip the unit test because it, we already changed the return code from high to welcome j and Quarkers, which means that we need to change our j unit uh, test scenario as well, but I'm not gonna have enough time to that. Just skip that uh, test scenario, just using the skip test parameter here. Oh, I just one thing missed here. So go to application property. So in order to deploy this function into Amazon Lambda, we need to specify the function name using Quarkus uh, Funky and Explorer. So let's try try to try to export uh, the hello first, and let's try to one more time to uh, packaging this application. Once the, we are done to packaging uh, the application, go to target directory. You got a bunch of the generated file, including classes file, and there are some YAML file based on JVM and a native. This is all uh, the generate uh, YAML stuff uh, to test a local machine before you deploy in Amazon production environment. And also there are really good uh, feature to generate a bash script, uh, no name is a managed script file. So in order to deploy your application, Java application or some JavaScript application, you need to uh, learn about how to use Amazon uh, CLI command line, just like Amazon Lambda create function. And there are some required uh, parameter you have to run and you ne we need to remember that and then how to delete, how to involve. There are a lot of steps uh, to figure out uh, how it works in uh, Amazon Lambda. But, Quarkus uh, generate the bash script and you don't need to worry about any longer. Just run this bash script with some parameter like a create, uh, delete and update, etc. Okay? So you just need to, uh, one thing uh, when you run this bash script, you need to specify your Amazon resource name. That is a unique key uh, deploy this function into your own Amazon credential. So for example, so I'm not. I'm going to use my own uh, Amazon Lambda resource here, and let's try to open my Amazon credential here. So here's Amazon uh, Lambda, and then I need to read all going here, and go to function. There's no function at this moment, and let's try to deploy my function. So it takes a couple of seconds, but sometimes more than 30 seconds. It depends on the, what kind of application uh, you uh, develop and deploy as a function in Amazon Lambda. Sometimes it depends on the net of bandwidth. So in my case, it's hopefully uh, it takes a 
in 10 seconds to finish deploy this application. So we just successful here and go back to Amazon Lambda and reload this page. Okay, we got a serverless funky here. And let's try to uh, run this application and create a configure test event first. So let's say hello, and there's no parameter here. So just empty and then create this configuration event and click on test. And in the meantime, uh, the Amazon Lambda tried to deploy uh, this application as a function. And now we got a, the welcome J4K and Corpus. Exactly the same result uh, as I ran on my local machine. It's pretty simple. So for the developer standpoint, I just deploy my application, uh, just package, Maven packaging command line, and then just run on single uh, command the bash script. Let's try to delete. Uh, just assume, okay, I don't need this function any longer because I, I needed to uh, save my money and go back to function, and this already gone. And let's try to uh, one more deploy uh, using different function. Uh, we create a hybrid, and one more time, maybe packaging uh, this application. And uh, in the meantime, the all the, the bash script and the YAML file automatically generate, and just create this. Just create this function uh, once again. And then go back to uh, here and try to reload. And still, okay, just successful. And then reload one more time. We got us a new function here. And I create a new uh, test event. And then let's say greeter. And then name is Daniel. Maybe my proper name, Dan. And then just create one and click on test so now we got a new result and uh, this is the uh, evidence uh, we just deploy a new function uh, from my local machine based on quarkus a funky uh, feature into amazon lambda welcome then or for serverless using quarkus funky pretty easy pretty simple so so i'm going to delete my function at this moment all right. Okay. So move on next. So I'm going to deploy this application one more time to open ship the container platform, uh, which is uh, already built on the KNABLE serverless using open ship serverless operator. So this is the another serverless platform. So in this demo, I deploy same application uh, into two different serverless platform. One is Amazon Lambda. The other is on-prem with the container platform like a Kubernetes cluster, but it's uh, already installed uh, KNABLE serving to deploy your Microsoft application as a, uh, as a serverless pod. Okay, so let's try to go to my uh, OpenShift container platform. I already created an empty project, the serverless funky, but there is no application at this moment because you don't see any topology and then go to here just to make sure I just already log in. Okay, okay, I need to log in first and click on login command line. And I'm gonna use token here to log in. And then my project serverless funky already here. Okay, I'm I'm now in right press here. Okay, and then in order to deploy uh, Quarkus application into, into OpenShift container platform, there's a, a several way. Uh, you can actually uh, just build application and containerize the application using container engine or the JIT contain uh, JIT uh, tool, uh, you know, remote uh, container, uh, the Docker container engine, or you can also use your OpenShift S2I, the source to image processor, the packaging your application. Uh, based on Binjar, and then uh, containerize the application once again and deploy OpenShift container platform automatically. Behind the scene, uh, OpenShift S2I processor will generate all necessary OpenShift and Kubernetes resources, such as the service account and service deployment, and a lot of uh, resources you need to deploy the application into OpenShift container platform. So let's try to. Uh, uh, add a new extension first here. 
the approach of the extension. This extension uh, will allows me to use uh, OpenShift uh, S2 processor. So it's really easy. And I just go back to my Palm XML and uh, I'm gonna to delete the Amazon Lambda extension because I don't need it to any longer here. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm back to the application. So I'm not gonna change anything on my application side except for application property because I needed to make sure uh, where is my application, uh, where is my open container platform and what kind of some configuration I need to use to S2 build. So I just copy from my cheat sheet here. I'm not gonna mess up on my live demo. So here is some application property, but let's try to de uh, deploy this first. So Maven clean package. I'm, I'm gonna skip unit test here once again. So it takes a, a couple of minutes uh, to finish that. So in the meantime, let's try to uh, explain a little bit more the configuration why we needed to use this one. So first one, the Quarkus container build image true means the uh, in the during this process, the first step we're gonna maybe package this application to create a finger, and then we need to containerize this finger uh, for. Linux container image like a Docker image. And then we're gonna use the base image like OpenJDK 11. And then we, once we uh, packaging this container image and then we need to push it into internal container registry inside OpenShift container platform. And also the OpenShift container platform by default use the TRS termination. And then this configuration, we can trust uh, the server service Self certificate uh, certification by OpenShift Container Platform. And also uh, with the target environment here, so Kubernetes deploy true, uh, it's already deployed OpenShift Container Platform. Okay, let's go back to OpenShift Container Platform. Okay, so here's a new uh, serverless application and a click on view logs. And now we can see here, so this is uh, Quarkus version, the race one community. And the huge interesting number here. So half a second to start this application using Finger and running on JVM here. So still pretty much faster than any other traditional Java stack because the, the other uh, Spring Boot or the Java stack, it takes a two second, 30 second, even simple Hello World application. So it's uh, almost four times faster than any other traditional uh, Microsoft application. So go to topology view, click on uh, end point here and go to uh, one of our function URL, hello. So welcome J4K Quarkus, and let's try to uh, involve uh, the other function name, go to my uh, ID tool, let's try to get uh, the serverless uh, route URL here, so serverless route URL here, and I just copy, and then I just change the endpoint here, Okay, so we gotta go to here, and you know, let's try to maybe a uh, default on parameter name, uh, my preferred name, then O, and uh, we gotta have just the same result here. So go back to our topology view, and this part will be uh, scaled down to zero uh, automatically if you don't have any demand or request this application in some specific in, uh, interval time. By default configuration in OpenShift serverless comp uh, configuration, uh, it will be 30 seconds. So we already spent maybe 10 seconds when I'm um, talking about. So, which means uh, this part will be terminating in next 20 seconds. Okay, in the meantime, let's try to deploy this application one more time once you, we, Packaging this application lib compilation, I already explained earlier in a slide deck. So, in order to uh, in order to uh, lib compilation, we're going to use the uh, lib profile when you define in a Palm XML here. So, here's a native profile. We can packaging this application, but we can also need to add uh, just a few more uh, configuration into application property file. So two things. So we're gonna uh, 
built as a native native comparison here. You know, what kind of basic image and build image are we gonna use for native comparison? We're gonna use the, here the Quarkus Mandra. So previously any community version still uh Quarkus using GraVM, and then we already released by Red Hat support the Quarkus. Uh, the name is Red Hat Build or the Quarkus, aka RHBQ. It's a fully support uh, the Quarkus application into our Quarkus uh, customer production environment. And uh, we're gonna release uh, this week uh, the new uh, Quarkus, uh, RHBQ Quarkus version 1.7, and which is include fully support of native comparison based on the Mandrel project. So Mandrel is a downstream of the GraVM project, uh, but also it's uh, support OpenJDK 11, and there are some inner project feature as well, like a debugging, et cetera. So this is a way how Red Hat support uh, neighbor comparison in the customer production environment with the Red Hat runtime subscription. All right, just go to our the, uh, existing uh, part is already terminated. And now let's try to delete existing all resources here before we deploy new application. Just uh, right, just clean up all image. And then we're gonna uh, package this application with the passed down parameter native. So generally it takes a little bit longer than uh, general Maven packaging because uh, in the meantime, uh, the native comparison include uh, the more step. Uh, for example, as you can see, uh, we can uh, plug in the GraVM version, and then once you uh, create the thin jar, and just like here, and then we need to put in the all necessary dependency and library, just like uh, uh, we need that stuff uh, during the runtime uh, uh, from traditional Java application. But native compilation, we put in the all necessary dependency and uh, uh, library in uh, we can we will do that at runtime and also we can create a new container image using docker running so just imagine uh, when you create your new container image i mean docker container image or uh, oci format container image you need to print the all necessary uh, dependency library into your single container image uh, as well as a base image like also you can print the actual application. So this is a similar concept to create a new uh, native executable file. You don't need to any dependency to print the all together in the single native executable file. So that's why it takes a little bit longer than uh, the general Maven packaging uh, when you are doing on your local machine. But you don't need to worry about for developer standpoint because you don't need to do every single time whenever you change your code. You can still use the uh, create a thin jar using Maven packaging without native comparison. So once you done your application development and then you need to deploy as a, uh, this application as a serverless or more lightweight application, at this moment, you just needed to need uh, native comparison. You can also put in the, this uh, native comparison task as a part of your CI CD pipeline. So developer standpoint, they just need to uh, packaging, testing, and development, just like a usual task. And then once you push your application into your Git repository and CI CD pipeline automatically trigger to uh, native comparison for specific use case. Okay, I think it's almost done. And then here's a more configuration I resume uh, to explain. Uh, the one thing you should know that is kubernetes.deployment dash target is k native. If you uh, if you put in the uh, open shift and this application will be deployed as a general and normal part into open shift container platform. And then when you put in the, the Kubernetes, this application just deployed the normal part into Kubernetes. So when you go to target directory and you can find Kubernetes directory and you can also find uh, Knative JSON and YAML file when you put in the Knative, Knative or when you put in the uh, Kubernetes, you can find the Kubernetes JSON file or Kubernetes YAML file. 
Also, you can put in the upper shift as a variable in this support, in this configuration. You can find the upper shift uh, YAML file and JSON uh, deploy, uh, create a new uh, resources. Okay, we just done. And go back to upper shift container platform. And so this uh, Quarks application already running and go to view logs and make sure that and now we got to so here, so native application running and then just 12 millisecond uh, to start, uh, we just need to the 12 millisecond to start up this application. Previously, we just need to uh, half a second, but it's pretty much faster than maybe 200 times faster than. So just imagine. So if you have just 10 Microsoft application and deploy a push to container platform or Kubernetes cluster, you don't need to uh, consider about native comparison. But you have more lots of pods uh, to deploy, maybe thousand pods deploy multiple Kubernetes cluster or even single big open shift container platform. This is a huge change in your resource management or uh, reduce your cost as well as it's a pretty easy maintainability. So go to topology view, and it's almost scaled down to zero because of the default time interval to scale down to zero is 30 seconds. Let's try to uh, not gonna uh, invoke this application because once it's scaled down to zero, let's try to access this application and let's take a look at that, how the Quarkus application uh, will go up automatically just like a sub race behavior. So we need to take some more, a few seconds uh, to terminate it, uh, this pod. Okay, just terminate it and go back to here. And let's try to end point and I could change the name. Uh, my friend name was again, Eric Murphy. Okay, and I just try to hit it. And go back to here, automatically start up your application and go back to our endpoint, it's already got the result. It takes uh, almost just one second uh, to make that happen. So this is uh, the reason why Quarkus really fit in uh, serverless application. So you, some of you already uh, aware of some interesting survey uh, by New Relic. Uh, they uh, surveyed earlier this year. So there's only 6% Java developer really uh, love to use uh, Java application to running on Amazon Lambda. And most of the developer really prefer to know JS and Python rather than Java because uh, Java looks feel uh, heavyweight or uh, slow start of time. But Quarkus with native comparison and a funky uh, feature uh, change that mind. I pretty assure that, okay? I think it's, uh, my demo is done and go back to my slide deck to recap. Uh, of my demo here and change the present mode to make it see better. So just to recap, uh, the Quarkus is a K Kubernetes native uh, Java application really fit in your uh, microservices and serverless in the cloud every application because the Quarkus uh, try to optimize your Java application in terms of the memory footprint and the startup time and response time along with the container technology. And also the Quarkus uh, provide the developer uh, the joy capability like a live coding and a unified configuration. So Quarkus provide by default uh, the preset uh, configuration prefix like a dev, test, and product, which means you just only one single application properly to handle multiple uh, uh, deployment environment. And Quarkus also, uh, uh, allows the Java developer to unify imperative and reactive application at the same time, uh, which means you don't need to learn about new uh, technology stack to implement the reactive application. Just you can use the same application with the dif using different annotations such as uh, streaming or incoming, outgoing. The new annotation uh, change and handle your existing traditional records of the application as the uh, event driven application. All right, the, the biggest benefit of the Quarkus is still Java. You don't need to worry about a uh, new steep learning curve to catch up the Quarkus technology. It's still Java, it's already the same. And more important thing is you can have a lot of extension, a lot of uh, the common and the standard 
the the open source project already joined and engaged the Quarkus application at to implement extension, for example, uh, monitoring with the Prometheus Jaeger and uh, security with the key clock and the deployment infrastructure like a Kubernetes and OpenShift and uh, Google and Azure and, uh, and uh, a lot of cloud platform and uh, there are more and more uh, micro profile capability you can use easily. And uh, one more time, the Red Hat runtime subscription uh, already include uh, Quarkus as a part of cloud Native runtime uh, with the Spring Boot and Vertex and Node.js and Quarkus, of course. And then also you can integrate easily with the existing uh, a new cloud native feature like a single sign on for your security, your Microsoft application, and a messaging broker, lightweight messaging broker, and also migration toolkit as well. You can use that uh, with the fully support in your production environment. If you're more interested about how to get started Quarkus application development, and then uh, just go to Binion URL, try dash Quarkus. You can find a very interesting uh, the self service uh, hands on experience. Uh, you can just you you can just use the uh, web browser. There are basic and advanced Quarkus uh, hands on experience based on a web browser, and then there are project generator. You can go to uh, code.quarkus.io. And for if you are uh, responsible for architect or team lead and compare to uh, or adopt a new technology and with the comparison with the existing uh, Java stack, you know, here's a, a good material. The IDC report published the Red Hat Quarkus Lab validation. You can find it's a free download and you can find the more the performance metric uh, compared to uh, the other Java uh, cloud native Java stack. Okay, thanks for uh, watching the, this live demo. And I, I will stay in a, uh, in a boost and then you can have any question around the Quarkus application or the uh, some Quarkus, uh, some strategy or load man or include the Red Hat runtime or cloud level runtime, uh, please let me know. I will be there to answer the question. Thanks for watching.